Skeleton on the Dunny. Alright, so you want to hear the story of the ghost on the dunny. Everyone wants to know about it, so I'm going to tell it for the last time. I'm going to put it on this recording. Someone else can write it down. My spelling isn't too good. And anyway, I haven't got the time for a lot of writing. I'm giving you this warning. It's not a polite story. If your feelings get hurt, it will be your own fault. I call a spade a spade, and I call a dunny a dunny. If you live in Australia or New Zealand, you know what a dunny is. It's a toilet. A lavatory. Other names for it are Throne, Lou, WC, Jerry, and Thunderbox. I've heard it called other things, but I won't mention them here. I'm not a rude person. I just get to the point. Some dunnies are outside. An outside dunny is usually at the bottom of the garden, a long way from the house. If it rains, you get wet. If it's night time, you have to get a torch and go there in the dark. When you have finished, you have to pull a chain to make it flush. There are no buttons or anything flash like that. Anyway, I must get back to the story. It all started when I was 14 years old. My parents died in a car accident and I went to live with my auntie Flo. She lived in the country, a Timboon. I was pretty broken up, miserable in fact. One minute I was happy as Larry with a mother and father living in a big house in the city. Next minute, I was with Auntie Flo in the bush. Auntie Flo was nice, but it wasn't her fault. I just felt low because of what happened. This sort of thing is hard to take. My new home is very old. It was a big wooden house with a veranda all around it. It had a tin roof. You could hear the rain falling on it at night. Inside, the house was very dark, gloomy. Every doorway had wooden beads hanging down on strings. There were old photos all over the walls. Pictures of glum men staring at you. In the hall there was a tall clock. A grandfather clock. It ticked loudly. The house was so quiet that you could hear the ticking in every room. For some reason you always felt like whispering. It was like a library. School had finished. It was the holidays. There wasn't much to do. I didn't know anybody in town. So most days I went hunting rabbits. Or snakes. Auntie Flo was very good to me. She liked me. Bob, she would say, you need fattening up. She made jam tarts and little cakes with icing and set them up on the table with neat napkins. She was a very good cook and very old. She didn't know much about boys. She let me go wherever I liked. She only had one rule. Be home for tea on time. I liked Auntie Flo, but I didn't like her outside dunny. One day, Auntie Flo took me aside. She was waving a bit of paper, and she looked really serious. It's very sad about your parents, Bob, she said. I'm worried about your future. If I die, there will be no one to look after you. She was a good-hearted old girl. A tear ran down her face. Anyway, she said, I've made some plans. This is my will. It tells what will happen to my things if I die. I have left everything to you. If I die, you'll get the lot, the house and my money. I didn't know what to say. I looked at my shoes. She kept talking with tears in her eyes. The only thing is, you won't get a painting I used to have. You can't have it because it's gone, stolen. It was in my family for a long time. It was worth a lot of money, very valuable. It was a painting of this house. I wanted you to have it. I pretended not to notice her tears. Who stole it, auntie? I asked. Oh, I don't know, she answered. I went away to England for two years. A man called Old Ned lived in the house and looked after everything for me. But when I came back, he was dead and the painting was gone. I asked auntie Flo how Ned died. I don't know, she said. I found him on the toilet at the bottom of the garden. He'd been there for a year. There wasn't much left of him. Just a skeleton sitting on the toilet. Well, that was nice. That was very nice. Now I had to go and sit in the outside dunny where someone had died. I didn't like going to that low at the best of times. You had to walk down a long path, overgrown with weeds. Trees stuck out and scratched your face. When you got inside, it was very dark. There was no light. There were cobwebs, and no toilet paper, just a nail on the wall with the newspaper hanging on it. It wasn't even worth reading the paper, 
It was only the age. Very boring. Those cobwebs have me worried too. Could be spiders. Redback spiders. Redbacks are poisonous. I knew that song about redbacks on the toilet seat. It wasn't very funny if your pants were down, I can tell you that. Redbacks, cobwebs, stories about skeletons and no one around. I didn't like sitting there with the door closed, especially at night. At night, it was creepy. One day, I was in the dunny, paying a visit. There wasn't much to do. Started counting holes in the wall. A lot of knots had fallen out of the wood. There were little round holes that let in a little bit of light. I counted up to hole number 20 when I saw something that made my hair stand on end. An eye was looking at me, staring at me through the hole. It wasn't any old eye. I could see right through it. I could see the trees on the other side of it. It was not a human eye. I pulled my pants up fast. No one's ever pulled their pants up just as fast as before. I ran up that path and ran back to the house like grease lightning. I told Auntie Flo about it, but she didn't believe me. Rubbish, she said. There's nothing down there. It's just your imagination. You can imagine how I felt. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I don't think. I was not going down there again. No way. Just think how you would feel at the bottom of the garden. In the dark. Sitting on a dunny where someone had died. Not only died, but turned into a skeleton. Then there were cobwebs, redback spiders, and eyes. Eyes looking at you through holes in the walls. I made up my mind I wasn't going down there again, ever. I didn't go there for a week. And I started feeling a bit crook. I felt terrible. Oh, you're not looking well, said Auntie Flo. You've not been regular, have you, dear? You better get some medicine. The medicine fixed me up, all right. I got the runs. I spent most of the day sitting down there. But what I was really worried about were the nights. Sure enough, it happened. I had to go to the loo in the night. I took a torch and went slowly down the dark path. The trees were rustling and something seemed to be moaning. I told myself it was a bird. I hoped that it was a bird. It had to be a bird. At last I reached the dunny. I went inside, shut the door and locked it. I had no sooner sat down than something terrible happened. The torch slowly went out. The batteries were flat. Flat as a tack. I think you can tell what happens to me when I get scared. My teeth start to chatter. They go clickety-clack. Very loud. So there I was, sitting in the dark with my teeth chattering. I tried to stop it, but I couldn't. I must have been able to hear the noise a mile away. I started to think about creepy things. Eyes, bats, vampires, murderers. I was scared to death. I wanted to get out of there. My teeth were chattering louder and louder. Then the moon came out. Moonbeams shone through the space on top of the door. I felt a bit better, but only for a second. I looked up and my heart froze. A face was looking at me. An old man's face. He had a beard and was wearing an old hat. He just stood there staring at me over the top of the door. And even worse, much worse, the moon was shining right through him. I could see through him. He didn't block out the moonlight at all. I couldn't get out. The old man was on the other side of the door. I was trapped. I started screaming out, Auntie Flo, Auntie, Auntie, help, help, a ghost. The face looked startled. Then it disappeared. I didn't waste any time. I kicked open the door and ran out. But fell flat on my face. I'd forgotten to pull my pants up. When I finally pulled up my pants, the ghost had gone. I tore up the path, screaming out for Auntie Flo. She didn't believe me. She knew I was scared, but she didn't believe that there was a ghost. Nonsense, she said. There's no such thing as ghosts. I've been going down there for 60 years and I've never seen one. I tried to make the best of it. I smiled. A weak smile, but a smile. Auntie Flo did not smile back. She was staring at me. Her mouth was hanging open. Bob, she shouted. Bob, one of your teeth is missing. One of your beautiful teeth. Put my hand up to my mouth. Sure enough, a front tooth was gone. Broken clean off. I knew what had happened. My teeth had chattered so hard that the tooth had broken. The ghost had done it now. I was starting to get mad with that ghost. Auntie Flo was upset. You must have done it when you fell over, she said. She put some new batteries in the torch. Then we went out to look for the tooth. There was no sign of it. There was no sign of the ghost either. The next day we went to the dentist. He had bad news for me. 
You'll have to have a plate, he said. The tooth is gone, and the piece that is left is split. What's a plate? I asked. It's like false teeth, he told me. But you'll only have one tooth that's false. You have to look after it. They cost a lot of money, so don't lose it. Clean it every night, put it in water when you go to bed, and don't break it by biting string or hard objects. The plate cost $200. Can you believe it? $200. Auntie Flo had to pay up. It was a lot of money. She made sure I looked after that tooth. I had to clean it every night and every morning. She checked on it when I was in bed. Every night she looked at the tooth in the glass of water. If the plate wasn't clean, she made me do it again. She wouldn't let me take it out of my mouth in the day. She thought I might lose it. That ghost had caused a lot of trouble. I had lost a tooth, and Auntie Flo had wasted $200. Didn't see that ghost again for about a month. Stayed away from the bottom of the garden at night time. I only went in the day. He didn't come in the day anymore. All the same, I made my visits very short. Did a lot of thinking about that ghost. Who was he? Why was he hanging around the dunny? I asked Auntie Flo about old Ned, who died down there. Auntie Flo, I said one day, you know that old man who lived there when you lost your painting? What did he look like? She looked sadly at the place where her lost painting used to hang, and then said, He always wore an old hat. He had a beard, a long grey beard. I knew at once that the ghost was old Ned. I felt a bit sorry for him. Fancy having your skeleton sitting on a dunny for a year. All the same, I wished he would go away. Didn't want to see him again. Of course I did. One night, I just had to go. You know what I mean. I got my torch out and went out into the dark, down to the bottom of the garden. I was scared. Really scared. My teeth began to chatter again. They were really clacking. I was worried about my plate too. With all the clacking, it might break. I took it out and held it in my hand. There I sat tooth in hand, and my real teeth chattering, enough to wake the dead. I left the dunny door open. If old Ned showed up, I wanted to get away quickly, and I didn't want to be trapped. I did the job that I went for. Then I pulled my pant up my pants. I reached up, pulled the chain. As I did so, I could feel someone watching me. My hand started to shake. Badly. The plate slipped out of my hand and into the dunny. In a flash it was gone, flushed down the loo. When I turned around, I saw old Ned standing there. I could see right through him. Through his hat, through his beard, through his hands in his face. He looked very sad. Very sad indeed. I didn't run. I didn't feel quite so frightened now I could see him properly. He was trying to say something. His mouth was moving, but no sound came out. And he was pointing, pointing to the roof of the dunny. I looked up, but there was nothing to see. Just a rusty old roof. What do you want? I heard myself say. Why are you hanging around this loo all the time? He couldn't hear me. Just kept pointing at the roof of the dunny. Then he started to fade. He just started to fade away in front of my eyes. Then he was gone. Vanished. I walked slowly up the path. I wasn't scared anymore, not of a ghost. He looked harmless, but I was scared of something else. I was scared of what Auntie Flo was going to say when she found out my plate was gone. Next morning, I jumped out of bed early. I wrote a note for Auntie Flo. It said, Auntie Flo, gone for a ride on my bike. I'll be back for tea. Bob. Set out to look for my tooth. I wanted to find it before Auntie Flo knew it was gone. I knew where the sewerage farm was. It's about 20 miles away to the north. My tooth had gone north. It was a long way. The road was very dusty and hot. The paddocks were brown. All the cows were sitting under the trees in the shade. There was no shade for me. I kept riding. By lunchtime, I could tell it was getting close to the sewerage farm. I could smell it. It was a bad smell. A terrible smell. As I rode closer, the smell got worse. At last, I reached the farm. It had a high wire fence around it. Inside, there were a lot of brown ponds. In the middle of all the ponds was a hut. Inside the hut, I could see a man. He was writing at a desk. That man had the worst job in the world. He was sitting down working in the middle of a terrible stink. A shocking stink. But he didn't seem to mind. I held my nose with one hand and knocked on the open door. Oh, come in, he said. What can I do for you? 
He was a little bald man with glasses. He looked friendly. He didn't seem to care that I was holding my nose. Uh, excuse me, I said. Have you seen a plate? Has a plate come through the sewer? It was very hard to talk with my hand holding my nose. It sounded as if I had a cold. A plate, he said. No, a plate wouldn't fit through the pipes. It would be too big. No, not that sort of plate, I told him. Not a dinner plate, a mouth plate. A plate with a tooth on it, a false tooth. Ah, he said, and smiled. Why didn't you say? False teeth? Yes, we have false teeth. He went over to the wall. There were lots of baskets there. They all had labels. One said pens and pencils. Another said watches. He brought over a basket and dumped it in front of me. It was full of false teeth. They were all dirty. They were brown. The man gave me a pair of tongs. I started to sort through them slowly. I felt a bit sick. I felt like throwing up. At last, I found a plate with only one tooth on it. My precious plate. It looked yuck. It was brown and slimy and it stank. I thought of where it had been, where I found it. I didn't know if I could ever put it in my mouth again. I wrapped it up in my handkerchief and rode slowly home. When I reached home, I went up to the bathroom and I scrubbed the plate. I scrubbed it and scrubbed it. It got a lot cleaner, but it was still the wrong colour. The tooth was not quite white enough. Next, I boiled, boiled it in water, but it still looked a bit grey. That was as clean as I could get it. I put it on the table and looked at it. I looked at it for a long time. Then I picked it up, closed my eyes, and I shoved it in my mouth really quickly. Old Ned had a lot to answer for. He had caused a lot of trouble. But all the same, I felt sorry for him. Couldn't be fun hanging around a toilet. I wondered why he was there, and why he looked so sad. I decided that I would go and see him and have a talk. I wasn't scared of him anymore. I waited until Auntie Flo had gone to bed. Then I took out my torch and set out for the dunny. It was very windy and wild. Clouds were blowing ac across the moon. The trees were all shaking. Leaves blew into my face. It seemed a long way to the bottom of the garden. When I reached the dunny, it was empty. There was no sign of old Ned. It was cold out in the wind, so I went inside and sat down. I waited for a long time. The wind started to get stronger. It blew the door shut with a bang. The moon went behind a cloud. It was very dark. The dunny started to shake. The wind was screaming and howling. Then the wall started to lean over. The wind was blowing the dunny over with me in it. There was a loud crash and the whole thing collapsed. It fell right over on its side. Everything went black. When I woke up, the wind had stopped. My head hurt, but I was alright. No broken bones, but someone was bending over me. It was old Ned. He was just as the same as before. I could see right through him, but he was smiling. He looked happy. He was pointing at the roof of the dunny. It was all smashed up. I went over and had a look. Under a piece of tin was a picture frame. It was Auntie Flo's missing picture, the stolen painting. I picked up the painting and put her under my arm. Auntie Flo would be glad to have it back, very glad. I started to say thanks to Ned, but something was happening. He started to float into the air. He was going straight up. He looked happy, happy to be leaving Earth. He floated up towards the moon. He grew smaller and smaller. At last, I couldn't see him anymore. He was gone. I knew he wouldn't be coming back. Auntie Flo was very pleased to get her painting back. She was so happy she cried. She hung it on the wall in its old spot. She kept looking at it all the time. I didn't tell her about old Ned. She wouldn't believe it anyway. But I know what happened. Old Ned stole the painting. He hid it in the dunny roof. When he died, he was in limbo. He was not in this world because he was dead. He could not go to the next world because he had done something bad. So he had to hang around the outside of the loo, hoping that Auntie Flo would find her painting. Now that she'd got it back, he was free to go. But when he floated off into the air, he was going to a happier place. Wherever that is. Auntie Flo put in a new toilet. An inside one. It was all shiny and clean. A push-button job. No cobwebs, spiders or ghosts. 
Well, it's just about the end of the story, except for one thing. One day I was looking at Auntie Flo's lost painting. It was a painting of her, of her house in the old days, when it had just been built. It had no trees around it. Out the back you could see the outside dunny with the door open. I looked very closely at that dunny in the picture. Someone was sitting in it. Sitting down? I went out and got a magnifying glass and looked at it again. It was old Ned, with his hat and his long beard. But he looked happy. He had a smile on his face and one eye closed. Like he was winking at me.